Okay, take 536. Let's talk about blackface, shall we? Over the last few weeks, unless you've been living under a rock of some form, you will have heard the term blackfishing, nigger fishing, which I'm not a fan of. Let me just throw that one down. So if you are unsure of what blackfishing is, if you have lived under said rock, let me explain what it is. Over the last few weeks, certain Instagram models have been dragged through the dirt, hypothetically, for basically being white, but appearing, supposedly, to be black. I, like many people, when I first saw this, I was interested, I was intrigued. I stood by the side and I had my own opinion. I didn't really feel like sharing it because I could feel it's a topic that gets people really, really angry. But after a few weeks of it, I just thought to myself, you know what, I'm going to have to share my opinion and I think that's something that we all need to do. So, what I did is I went onto my Instagram. If you don't follow me on Instagram, please feel free to do that now. I mean, it's right there. And what I did is I explained to my followers what my point of view was on the whole blackfishing situation, which I'll be sharing with you as well. And as always, with any controversial subject like this, a lot of people were extremely opinionated. Some people agreed with me, some people disagreed with me, some people were furious, some people were really happy about it. It's a really, really weird situation to be in, to have something that is so polarising. So, just like with that situation, I want you to get involved. I understand that this is really touchy for some people. I understand that some people get very upset about it. And... We are human, I understand your emotions, so please feel free to share them, but can I ask that you're not hateful? This is a space where hopefully we can have a dialogue because I feel like when it comes to issues like race, a lot of the time the people that are really, really angry get heard the loudest and then people that might have feelings in between are scared to say what they have to say because of fear of upsetting anyone. Whereas we are all affected by race. It happens to us on a daily basis and we should be able to speak about it freely and hopefully in talking, we can all understand and we can all live together in this world and just love each other. Now, two words I'm going to be saying a lot are intent and context, okay? So, my intent for this video, again, isn't to offend anyone, it's to open up a dialogue so that we can all get talking. The context of me, so you can understand perhaps why I hold the views that I do, is as follows. I am from London, if you couldn't already tell from my accent, London, UK. My mum is white, British, my dad is Nigerian. I grew up with my white family. I lived in a very multicultural area in East London. I lived in Walthamstow, however I went to schools outside of the area to be closer to my grandparents which were <laughs> a bit less diverse. I went through racism at quite an early age. I remember being told to go back to Niagara, you packy, which makes absolutely no sense. But um, being the only mixed race girl in the class and being told that when you were 10 was kind of a bit rough. Anyway, I went to a more diverse secondary school. I went to university with lots of different races. Many of my friends are from all over the world. I've taught in London for two years in an incredibly diverse school. I then taught for two years in Dubai and in an even more diverse school, but with a completely different demographic of kids. And now I'm living in New York and I should hopefully be teaching kids here too, in what will be another multicultural diverse school. So that's me. And hopefully that will explain to you why I respond in certain ways. So for example, I personally feel like at the moment we're in a world where people just get real angry. And when they find that someone has a different view to them, their instant response is to hate that person and to shout and scream without being willing to hear what other people have to say. Now, don't get me wrong, sometimes I want to do that too. And I found that as a teacher, there were times when I'd have to deal with kids that were just incredibly annoying and rude and horrible to each other. But I wasn't able to be like, you're a terrible human being, your life is going to be awful, you're just the worst. Instead, I have to come with some form of understanding. Understanding where the ignorance comes from, trying to work out their intent of whether they actually meant to be horrible to another student, whether they even understand that they're being offensive, and then, as a teacher, explain to them why they did something wrong. And I think if we all kind of took a step back, try and get rid of the instantaneous anger that we feel when certain things happen and try and understand why things happen, Obviously not when we're dealing with complete idiots and bigots, but I mean in day-to-day -day situations, we'd probably get along a hell of a lot better. So, let me explain my views on blackface. Dun, dun, dun. Okay, so let's just dive in. Straight off the bat, this, I personally don't consider to be blackface. 
going back to the fact that I'm an English teacher, I am all about definitions and I just don't feel like the definition of blackface and the connotations that come with what blackface was applies to this and I'll explain to you why. The dictionary definition of blackface is makeup applied to a performer playing a black person especially in a minstrel show and we can't ignore that part about a minstrel show because you need to have an understanding of what blackface was and how it was used within these minstrel shows to have a full understanding. The Smithsonian explains the effect of the minstrel shows a bit more. It says, by distorting the features and cultures of African Americans, including their looks, language, dance, deportment and character, white Americans were able to codify whiteness across class and geopolitical lines as its antithesis. Basically, what that means is, they were trying to show how different they were and by doing that they were able to show this is what whiteness is and this is the other. For example, they presented black people as being lazy, stupid, constantly womanising, chasing after people and doing really, really negative things. Now some people still try and suggest that this is harmless, but it wasn't. The Jim Crow laws that segregated black and white people in the southern states of America after slavery was named after one of these minstrel performers. Again, a minstrel performer that was shown to be lazy, stupid and basically completely inferior to the white people that were in control, thus justifying why they were segregated and why they shouldn't be able to integrate. This is a problem. <laughs> now there are some people that still look at their gollywog, okay? Those hideously racist dolls that look like minstrels or they think affectionately back to seeing their favorite Hollywood performer performing as a minstrel. You might have even watched Tom and Jerry like I did as a child and watched that really weird messed up episode where Jerry literally put on black grease on his face, acted like a tribes person and then they got chased off the island. I think. Wait, tribes people tried to eat them? It was a really weird, really, really racist, <laughs> racist episode. But still, this was popular up until the 50s, but we have to understand how negative it is. And I think the vast majority of us do. Now, more recently, really stupid people have tried to say, I didn't know it was racist. Yes, you did, okay? We all did. And that is the exact reason why these college students that go to these college parties that you see in films and are actually happening, crazy enough, um, dressed up as black people, painting themselves as black people and just taking disgusting photos, that's the exact reason why they often lose their place in college, rightfully so, and get in so much trouble. Because clearly, that is being racist. And at that age, again, me being a teacher of teenagers, Sometimes I give them leeway, but I really feel like when you get to college, you know what you're doing, okay? Blackface is laced in racism. It is presenting black people as a caricature, then using it as a way to enforce the idea that they should be seen as secondary in society. That is not what this is. <laughs> Uh, to me it really isn't and i think the other thing is that because we associate it the term blackface brings all of that baggage with it okay so because these people are being seen as performing blackface even though they're just putting a little bit of tan on whatever it is we are now saying that they are racist. Now let's again look at some definitions, shall we? The definition of racism is prejudice, discrimination or antagonism directed against someone of a different race based on the belief that one's own race is superior. Prejudice, discrimination and antagonism. Now unless any of these girls have purposely put this makeup on to antagonise people, then it's not antagonistic. Unless they are saying, I'm better than you because look, my hair is blonde, but look how awful it looks like this, then I don't really think it's showing prejudice or trying to show how you're better than someone else. And I don't really feel like it's discriminating against someone. Now, as you can tell from my change of attire, I've had to refilm the ending because I watched it back and it was just trash. Let's me be completely honest with you. I didn't like it. I felt like I oversimplified it. And I think that this is something that we are all in danger of doing. I think lots of people instantly see these girls and are just like, nope, hateful, blackface. They hate all black people. They're just racist, which I think is definitely oversimplifying. And then on the other hand, we have people that are just like, do what you want. Wear an afro, completely pretend to be a different race. Do what you need to do. Now, neither I personally feel are appropriate for this. What I feel is that we need to actually look at the individual. Again, going back to me being a teacher and trying to be diplomatic, 
You can't just assume that people all have the same intentions and context. Ding! And personally, I honestly don't think the majority, not all, but the majority of these girls wake up and decide, I'm gonna try and be black today. I just don't think so. I honestly feel like a lot of it is down to beauty standards changing, whether we want to admit it or not. A huge influence of that is the Kardashian family who have taken over social media. All you need to do is go on to YouTube and so on and you can see that the style of makeup and so on has changed. Fuller lips, I, I, it makes me cringe saying it, but they are the trend. Now, I don't want to spend too long focusing on the Kardashians because they are a whole complex issue in themselves. A lot of people have a lot of anger towards them and see them as culture vultures, taking elements of the culture that they like and completely dismissing the rest. Now, we're going to ignore that and just focus on their appearance. The way that the beauty standards have changed is that more tanned skin is in, fuller lips, wider, fuller hips, so basically things that we would associate with black women. Now because of this, because of beauty standards changing, a lot of people are happy with this. And I can understand why, because I think back to going to an almost all white school when I was younger, I feel like if I was able to see people that even look slightly like me in the media, I might feel more comfortable within my own skin. Therefore I understand why some people message me saying that they think it's a beautiful thing. However, I also understand why it would upset black women. Dark-skinned black women in particular are still not represented enough within the media and it must be very difficult for people that have gone through racism themselves, maybe being bullied for having these features, seeing that other women have chosen to take on those features and are being celebrated for it when black women still aren't. It's something that is a common theme that's been going on for a long time, but even looking at modern videos, you might see that the directors in music videos choose at certain times to rather than have a black woman feature, they want to have these racially ambiguous, exotic looking women. And what I mean by racially ambiguous is I don't think that these women are specifically thinking, I want to look like a black woman. It's just that the features, it's like picking and choosing features that they find beautiful, some of which black women have, and the end result is someone looking at you and being like, hmm, where's she from? She doesn't look fully white. Just that rather than really committing to being a black woman in disguise. Another issue that black women express to me as well is the whole idea of white privilege. And this is something that we can't completely ignore or just be like, eh, not a thing. There are certain things that white people can do that black people can't as readily do. So the fact that these white women are able to take these features or even take elements of the culture and so on. And this is goes beyond just these women, but I'm talking about people that are doing things that are historically black, like white rappers, for example. It upsets people to know that white people are able to do that without actually having to go through the black experience. So not actually experiencing what it's like to go through the discrimination that black people go through, yet are being celebrated for doing something that is stereotypically black. But we're not here to talk about the g Easys and the Macklemores of the world. Let's get back to these girls. As much as I empathise and I understand the feelings of black women and there are different girls that are doing this that annoy me more than others, overall I just feel like people are taking it way, way, way too seriously. I think in the grand scheme of things, when there's so many other really overtly racist things happening in the world, like literally on a daily basis, politically especially, I just feel like channeling all your hate towards these girls isn't doing anyone any favours, least alone you. I don't think it's right that these girls have received death wishes, like telling them to kill themselves. One girl recently brought out a video. She was saying that she got like 200 DMs telling her to kill herself after all of this blackfishing started. And I just think that's ridiculous that in this day and age, something like this can cause so much hate. When again, I don't think the intention of these girls was to look black mock black people or be remotely offensive. We need to think about the context. I know some girls from East London, white girls, that can cornrow and braid hair way better than I can and cook a really mean jerk chicken. And this is not in no way them saying, I want to be a black woman. It's that they have grown up around all Jamaican or all black people, for example, and they're just kind of assimilating to that society. It's something that's happening naturally in such a globalist society. And again, I can speak from experience from living and teaching in London, but also living and teaching in Dubai, 
when you're in a different culture or you're immersed in a different culture eventually you will start picking up traits from that culture whether you want to suddenly decide i'm going to be a different race now or not i don't feel like that is the intention with most people so teaching in east london for example i might teach a white boy that has friends that are all black or even an indian boy that is friends with all black boys now in no way would i look at that child and think that child is trying to be a different race but if you are friends with people if everyone around you is wearing certain clothes listening to certain music and speaking in a certain way it's going to affect the way that you then present yourself and behave and this isn't me just imagining things and making stuff up looking at the language in london for example of my grandfather for example was an old east end londoner that means that when he grew up being from a working class family he spoke with a cockney accent now in recent years the actual language that young people and people in the working class in london use has completely changed cockney isn't really used as much anymore and it's been replaced by multicultural london english aka MLE. And this is a result of all of these cultures coming together. There's lots of elements of the language that have come from Jamaican or Caribbean cultures, Bangladeshi, Indian, Pakistani, African, Turkish, whatever. But what this results in is the young people of London all speaking in a way that is very similar to each other and very, very different to the way that their parents speak. I think it would be very difficult for a child living in that environment to consciously make the effort to not assimilate and to act or speak like their friends when it's something that you do naturally when you are around people. And I feel like contextually, there are probably some girls here that are doing the exact same thing, that in their friends it isn't seen as something abnormal, the way that they've got a bit of tan or the way that they're presenting themselves, because it's just how everyone else is dressing and how everyone else looks. But what's going through their mind is they're not saying, I'm going to be a black girl today. They're just literally dressing and behaving like the majority of other East London girls are doing. Now that's only a few examples and I know some of these girls well some are from Sweden and places where there really isn't a large amount of black people and that's something completely different but again even with that looking at the intent I don't think they're trying to offend people the majority of these girls I think are following the change in beauty standards which is showing that being exotic and racially ambiguous is kind of the in thing I also don't think that we can generalize because they're not all grouping together like internationally have like a secret white organization where they're all just like so we're going to all pretend to be black without dealing with the black issues that black people face <laughs> It doesn't work like that, okay? I don't feel like we can generalise at all. As long as someone isn't hurting someone, so if they're not mocking people, they're not being offensive, they're not trying to be the caricature like we discussed with blackface, and they're not claiming to be a completely different race, I personally don't see what the problem is. I really, really don't. And again, maybe that's just for me living in societies where I've seen how cultures are fluid and that people pick up and appreciate different cultures. But I think there's a real difference between cultural appreciation and cultural appropriation. So trying to claim it and turn it into a costume, whereas seeing something beautiful and wanting to either emulate it or just it kind of naturally just happening that way rather than again trying to be like I'm a black woman if that makes sense it's a complex issue the one thing that I know and I will stick by we shouldn't be attacking these girls I feel like this whole black fishing thing kind of needs to die out now like we get it you've expressed now to these girls that it's disgusting to you I still think that we could come at them in a better way if you feel like they are doing something completely inappropriate talk to them Attacking people isn't going to help them understand what your point of view is. I feel like we need to have an open dialogue with people to explain the origins of things and if people are going to be wearing clothes or wearing their hair in a certain way or wearing turbans or whatever, you need to at least understand where it comes from. Fulani braids are not Boderic braids. That's not where they originated from. A white woman didn't originate or coin this hairstyle and create it herself. They existed long before. So yeah we're definitely gonna have to talk about the kardashians and how they have coined or changed the names of specific styles and so on but overall i just feel like this 
isn't as much of an issue as people make it out to be. I think that we should think about each person as an individual and try and understand what they're doing, where they're from, what their intentions are. And yeah, just generally be nicer to each other, but that's just my opinion. If you think I'm completely wrong, please feel free to share below. <laughs> Give it a like, please subscribe, as I'm going to be talking about more controversial subjects like this that we kind of dance around and tend not to talk about in depth or listen to each other on. And I shall see you soon, hopefully. Bye.